welcome back uh, uh, we are beginning with the last module of this course which is the usability uh, part of this course so we will discuss the overview of usability and how it's actually related to the security in this uh, lecture the agenda for today's lecture goes something like this uh, we'll begin with uh, basic what exactly usability means and uh, how it's actually related to security and how they actually trade off and we'll take the case study of uh, an authentication system particularly the password based authentication system and uh, also the biometric authentication system and then we'll understand how what are the usability aspects with respect to these two authentication mechanisms so i want to begin this lecture by showing couple of uh, the screenshots one of them is here so uh, this is a screenshot taken from the uh, uh, an alert that is uh, shown on the screen by the internet explorer uh, the browser so uh, the what it written here is something interesting it says that uh, when you send information to the internet it might be possible for the others to read that information and uh, it is asking the user whether do you want to continue Uh, with this are you okay with uh, others if they are seeing the information are you okay with that and in addition to that what it is showing is couple of options one is uh, in future you don't show this message uh, there is a check box so that is by default it is uh, checked and then by default it is saying yes don't show this message in the future so now let's try to understand what is the implication of message on the user how users actually take this and uh, react to this piece of the alert that is shown on the user so uh, probably you and me who are engineers and have little bit of knowledge of the security might understand what is the information and when you say that uh, when the information is sent over the internet others can read it Uh, but not all users are uh, having that knowledge probably there might be some users who don't even understand what is what we mean by information so when i am browsing a web uh, something or surfing with the web what exactly the information is probably they may not understand and in addition to that uh, by default by showing an option that uh, you don't show this message uh, repeatedly and then uh, uh, taking the input of yes from the users uh, probably for subsequent cases the <laughs> internet explorer may not be showing that uh, alert this kind of thing has implications on the security so does it serve any purpose first of all so if by default you are expecting the user to say yes uh, then why exactly we are showing this message to the users and uh, uh, but even by showing that uh, if the your uh, user is anyway going to click yes and continue to do his work so what purpose does it serve that is the question that we want to uh, ask so uh, here is a uh, second screenshot which actually shows an alert uh, Uh, to the user saying that your account uh, requires uh, resetting your password and it is saying that your uh, password expires in 3 days you need to set a new password to right now to your account so uh, why this is then there is a context to it uh, probably if your account password is stolen or somebody has got access to it then uh, your account is compromised so periodic changing of the passwords may be will help you to recover your account and stop from other snooping or log having access to your account with that good intent this is done there is you what if the uh, the system is asking you to change the password every now and then maybe every week you need to uh, change your password and you should set a new password how does that uh, actually goes with the users are you will you be happy or uh, doing that or uh, there is an issue with that so in general uh, it might be good for the system security perspective to change the password uh, frequently but there is a limit to that users how many new passwords that you can uh, remember and then uh, after a while you frequently ask the user to reset what exactly happens is the user sexually try to recycle the passwords so in that context instead of helping the uh, 
securing the systems if your earlier password is compromised then the subsequent also when you recycle it that also the others can actually get access to that so that is the kind of the implication that we are referring to so this is broadly what we call it a usability aspects so we'll formally define what exactly usability is but just to give a context of these two the alert message that we showed exactly help you to gain some background so uh, before actually you look into the usability aspect so let's understand uh, what can go wrong if a cyber security uh, uh, breach and happen one is uh, if there is a incident security incident then in order to fix that or recover from that in future uh, such an issue doesn't uh, reoccur you need to do investment maybe you need to procure a security system i need to install uh procure and install a new uh, kind of the intrusion detection system or a firewall or something like that so that requires investment so that's the economic part of the issue and then uh, if your system is every now and then is compromised then users lose uh, faith in that system and then they might be reluctant to use that and then in rare cases uh, that might lead to one compromise lead to complete collapse of the entire ecosystem that's called a catastrophic one event is actually leading to the second one and the third one and so forth so all of them have, may have financial implications and at the end of that you need to be at that that is the kind of the issue you might encounter so in order to prevent uh, not from happening this from happening so what you need to do is you need to safeguard your system so you need to safeguard your system so that's what we discussed in the previous lectures you have bunch of techniques so safeguard your system you need to employ them so what asking is how usable those uh, security system that we have designed so whether the users can make the, are comfortable with that or will they have an issue with that that is the usability so in general there is a perception in the security community that uh, usability means uh, the user interface how well it is defined uh, designed so whether what action we need to take by looking at the user interface itself is uh, intuitive or uh, it just requires a kind of the big training for the end users so that is the uh, issue but uh, going deeper into that the usability is not limited to only the user interface design it is actually actually much more than that in fact the uh, international standard organization defines the usability collectors it is the extent to which the user a specific group of the users are able to use that security system uh, to meet the objectives for which it is the acquired so if that is done then uh, of course with the efficiency and if they are happy using that then we say that the system is actually usable and this is actually a subjective uh, satisfaction so whatever is uh, satisfactory to me probably may not be satisfiable to others as well so that it, it goes with a certain context so uh, different people have tried to define the usability in different terms here is another uh, definition from uh, the uh, researchers called nielsen and uh, snederman so they define the usability with many attributes whether the system how easy it is to learn whether it is efficient to use uh, how easy it is to memorize the system so if you want to do repeated task using whatever you have done today tomorrow can you recollect that and do it that's called memorability whether there are possible errors catastrophic errors that are happening with that one so of course that goes with the subject to satisfaction so that is there in the previous definition as well so if you meet all of these something which is easy to learn something which is very efficient in its operation something which is easily memorizable and with no catastrophic errors that are happening plus the uh, you are satisfied with the uh, that is the subject to satisfaction then we say that the system is really usable so uh, uh, having said that the as i said this subject to satisfaction there is no hard and fast rule to quantify this uh, satisfaction how usable this system is if you ask that question okay it is 100% is usable 100 is the usability quotient and it is not at all usable that's why it is zero uh, usability quotient so that way you cannot define it 
in general if a large section of the people to whom the system is in mean for if they are happy to use it then we in general we say that its excel system is usable so this usability uh, is closely related to the couple of other terms called the functionality and security so uh, uh, so we need to understand this usability in that context so let's try to define what is a functionality and what is the security how it's related to the security and then we'll add the usability question to that and look holistically what exactly the entire uh, mixer look like so we say that a uh, functionality is something if the application meets the desired goals functionality whatever we set as an objective to begin with if your application is meeting that uh, set of goals then we say that the fun it the system or the any any system is actually having that functionality so uh, just to take an example if you uh, think of your mobile phone so you want to add a new feature maybe its, uh, its feature can be anything i want to have an audio recording system in my well or a call recording uh, feature in my mobile phone so if the new product that you design if you are able to do that with the new design so we say that it meets the functionality requirement so that is the simple definition of the functionality so in general this functionality is of interest to many people first of all it is of interest to the developers because developers don't want to spend too much time repeatedly fixing the issue if the your functionality fails if you are not able to record the calls on your mobile phone so that's the requirement but you are not able to do that or for some reason the uh, application is actually failing then uh, the person who is in charge of developing that has to uh, fix that so that's the issue so uh, having the right functionality right at the beginning and which is a properly working functionality is important to the developers and of course it makes sense for the marketing people to go out and pitch for okay we have a new product which is meeting or having so and so functionality and also for the management to, to showcase that we have developed so and so kind of applications it is used by so and so people and they are happy saying that for them also it makes sense and security we say that any system that is defined developed is secure if the unintended things don't happen in the system so that's what if you can recollect the first lecture two things one is when something is supplied when the system is used uh, uh, by an user uh, and anything any input that is supplied to the system without uh, the malicious intent the system does not fail or the other way around so when something is given with malicious intent the system does not fail that am also then we see that the uh, system is secure security is of interest to security experts but in general the people or the users are looking at the set of the features so what is new in this one so that's the selling point for user so somebody would be uh, uh, the end users usually pay for new set of the features that are added to the system rather than uh, something which is more more secure so that is actually the uh, uh, drawback that uh, goes with the security something which is more secure probably uh, if i come back and then say uh, this previous uh, uh, version number 5 of the mobile phone is actually more secure than version number 4 um, not many users would be interested to probably put in 30 40000 and then buy that uh, new uh, phone uh, mobile phone so that that that's the link point but the sad reality so uh, but uh, if you want to use the security in uh, along with the application because if the system is not secure then you will have many issues so what the experts view as a security uh, and then what exactly happen in on the field when the users actually use that uh, system are probably completely different so the expert might have one view so they might design a good algorithm to do the security 
but that does not necessarily translate into uh, the intended uh, security it does not may not necessarily provide in security so the cryptography expert might say that uh, i have the best encryption algorithm that is possible to implement on this system so you might say that my system is secure and it might design some password storing mechanism which is secure it cannot be cracked but in practice what happens is something like this so somebody who is sitting behind you might be watching what kind of uh, letters that you enter on your keyboard or the other way around something might come and say that you need to give your password or the key that you use to secure your system so how do you actually could, you know there is the point is uh, on lighter note basically what is uh, reality and what the expert sees these two worlds might be completely contradictory more and more this these are all the attacks that i am uh, showing on this one in fact the uh, whole set of the social engineering attacks that we discussed just they are all manipulation of the human minds so that's what uh, first so the exploit the human weakness so somebody is entering the password if somebody is seeing from the back then there is nothing the, that algorithm can do in this context so and in addition to that what complicates the matter is users are not experts of the security they don't understand the implications of uh, what can go happen or what can go wrong beneath that so in that context what i am saying is having the best set of the algorithms or the best security mechanism that you have put in place does not necessarily translate into the best safety that is possible there are two uh, few reasons why this is a hard task first of all the users who are the users of the system for them security is hard to understand meaning what can go wrong if i don't do this that understanding the users would have it is in the cyber world in the digital world it is very hard for the people of course a class of the users might understand but in generally large section of the people of there do not understand the implications of the uh, what can go wrong unless they experience themselves and the second thing the security system the design or even for the expert for that matter sometimes are harder to configure and to use it so remember uh, i'll just give an example so let's say uh, the system administrators are the ones who are in charge of managing the uh, firewall system on your network and uh, uh, the firewall the network uh, uh, firewall which operates at the boundary of your network is uh, managed by the expert so called the system administrator and uh, the user interface or the command line interface that the firewall system has got requires the uh, user to give the administrator to give so many input and then configure it rightly so if they make a mistake uh, while configuring the firewall itself it not only puts the uh, system administrators uh, into risk but whole set of the other users also at risk so everybody who is uh, behind that firewall will also be at uh, risk so that is the kind of the implications i have so in that context the security system need to be uh, uh, in that sense it should be uh, telling the system administrator or it should make that uh, system administrator job simpler what kind of the rules i need to write and how do i configure it where to install it and all of these things should be very very intuitive then only the configuration would be right so if they make mistake then will application uh, so same thing goes with the other applications as well so uh, uh, 20 25 years back well, most of the time the security when we in general say the security it is a more of more or less the uh, network administrator or system administrator job to ensure that the systems are secure so that time the uh, we didn't have the mobile phones or so many devices in the picture but now it is not the case with so many devices into the uh, okay into the network and everybody bringing their own set of the ss it's pretty hard to manage and uh, configure the security system itself which can work with all these diverse set of the co- devices so often what can happen is the security systems that are out there may 
may become an obstacle for the work to do if somebody want to send an email or open some application or a gaming application something like that and if your security system is not allowing that to happen then the user should be frustrated so what can happen is in that context if the users are frustrated if they are not able to do what they are intended to do then they will bypass that security or find out the means to bypass that security so this is when the system is in use but on the other hand uh, the security incorporating the security as a principle inside the uh, your system itself may become an obstacle for the design choice itself or may become an obstacle for adding new features so remember the users are paying for the new features not for security so in that context the designers also have got no choice but to go with the functionality rather than going with the uh, security so that makes in that sense the security itself take the back seat so what is the all this next is bringing us to one consensus which is that security is as a background it is required but it is at the uh, back end and at the same time if it conflicts with the either the uh, the functionality or the usability aspect then the security would take the back seat but uh, security is required because it has got so many implications itself in all these things when i say that the users are Uh, turning off the security systems or the misconfigure what exactly is happening is one common thing which is the users are involved in certain decision making process so he is he or she is in the loop whether he, some options are given and then the user has to make choice so in that the the first slide the they showed it is asking users to whether you want to continue to do this or not the others can actually read that message so in case inevitably they might say yes there are number of number of such options or the controls are given to end users where there are chances of misconfigurations happening so for example your web browsers might have options to select uh, uh, the minimal security the balanced security or the uh, very uh, advanced uh, the security so if that control is given Mm, some users might configure it depending upon what is the requirement they might choose the right option and they go ahead and use the system but the uh, in general uh, uh, if, if uh, that uh, if you let's say uh, you configure it for the high security then the system is actually repeatedly showing an alert message or is not letting you to visit certain some of the websites or not allowing you to download something then uh, the users would be frustrated so what the end, at the end what will happen they might turn it off and then continue to use it and there are other as well you might ask the user to choose the right set of the password with certain combinations so it is hard to remember and then when you download some exe from the web Uh, so that exe might be unauthorized whether you want to continue to install on your system or not you ask the users so if the user desperately wants that uh, want to run that without verifying whether this is actually a genuine exe or some malicious exe they might continue to install that on the system or at the other end if you have even for the sake of let's say this antivirus systems they do give some options so if something malicious is found out whether you want what you actually want to take that on that one whether for the options could be something like this uh, whether you want to quarantine that uh, exe or delete that exe or continue to install so if that and is given not every user is going to make the right choices because simply because the reason that uh, they may not understand the implications or the other way around uh, it might uh, uh block certain uh, use cases for the end users so uh, because of these two reasons so it's actually uh, becomes problematic so giving the uh, control to the end users or involving him or her in the secret decision making is actually not a good uh, idea so in a nutshell if you look at although you may have the strong cryptographic algorithm provably correct uh, uh, protocols 
and you might have in fact written the bug pre code in spite of all of these having the right things in place because of the uh, uh, end users actions all of them might be uh, these things might be useless so that's what the uh, takeaway is so where did the user go wrong as i said uh, they might do misconfigurations mm, they might fail to click on certain or select certain options they might choose the uh, easily guessable passwords or the keys they fail to secure the passwords or the keys they might write it somewhere on the uh, in some piece of the paper or in a file in the system so if that happens then your security would be supported so uh, that brings us to the question uh, uh, so functionality security uh, uh, this is how they are related and uh, in order to make the security to be enabled and used by the end user systems we need to understand how usability is actually related to the uh, security in general uh, the uh, a, a community says that the security and usability trade off the more secure the system is probably that is less usable and the other way around that is the meaning of that when they say when we say the trade off so, so here is an example which we visited earlier so periodic uh, password changes may be co helpful or the co required for the security of the system but if it becomes too frequent then co it's actually co the when the users recycle the passwords then the security of the system might be again subverted so in that sense uh, i need to make a, a very informed uh, decision so how frequently i need to ask the user to change the password and uh, uh, whether recycling is allowed if so then how many uh, times the user can recycle the password so after how many re so for example so you cannot reuse the password which is used to, which is just the third recent one so anything beyond that might be allowed whether it's with third second or tenth so these are the questions so when you make the choices that has got implications on the users so in general for the user interface design so to there are some standard methods how usable to measure how usable that interface is Uh, but the uh, the uh, as i said the usability is not just the user interface but whole lot of other things uh, for example this configuration of how frequently that password need to be changed is uh, a kind of the design choice so that has nothing to do with the user interface so user interface might give you an option to select new password set it and uh, click something so that is okay but how frequently they you need to change and uh, how many times you can recycle and all these are choices so uh, in that context uh, so you need to understand that uh, what kind of implication it carries uh, so right from the beginning you need to think of uh, security and also the usability in hand so if i make this uh, so uh, what i'm trying to say is when somebody is designing a secure system she so should not be looking at the security in isolation okay i need the best uh, class of the algorithm cryptography i need the best class of the security for this one so but uh, if that happens then in the process if you complicate the things then the end user should not accept that uh, reality so that is what the nis uh, now the vision is as we said there is a trade off between the security and usability and uh, every time you try to make or secure the systems so that comes with a cost whether the what would be the reaction whether that added layer of the uh, obstacle for the security perspective if the user has to accept that then what is that uh, is required in that context these two questions will probably help you understand that Uh, does this added security make things more difficult to use the second question is will people always resent to this extra steps the answer to both of these questions are uh, probably not so i'll just give an example uh, probably when we call up us when we uh, stepping out of our home 
will uh, lock the uh, door of our homes and then uh, uh, secure that and then go because uh, we understand that this is uh, in uh, adding uh, locking your door has nothing to do with the uh, uh, home but uh, uh, it gives you the users have accepted because we have understood what is the uh, things that are at stake if you don't lock your home what can go wrong it is open for theft burglary burglary and other things so in that context because the implications are very clear if i don't do this if i don't lock my home and then go outside these things can happen uh, that gives us the confidence that uh, or the uh, uh, the uh, to accept that we need to lock the door when we step out so same thing if you are able to convince or convert in the security also if you don't do the right choices or if you don't spend that extra time and extra money to buy the right security layers into uh, your system then things can go wrong as long as the users understand these implications then you are okay the people would be willing to accept that and maybe a compromise on uh, not to download something not to access something if your system says in simple terms so uh, that is how the uh, the security and usability are uh, related so let's understand the usability concept in little more detail from a, a security uh, uh, application or use case called the user authentication so uh, user authentication is usually done through Okay. two prominent methods of course there are three methods for the sake of discussion are taken to so which is something the user knows which is your probably the password or something user has so maybe the security token or your app that comes on the mobile phone for if you enable two factor authentication these are examples of the something the user has got unless you have that uh, mobile phone which is linked to that uh, account you cannot actually enter that so now the uh, uh, passwords all of us know what is the uh, issue with this what are the dangers if you have that mobile phone with an app installed on that that mobile phone can be stolen so if you have a password set into your set to your account you might forget that uh, password or accidentally or deliberately might disclose the password to someone else and uh, in the worst case the device uh, on which you, uh, you have stored that or installed that app might be lost so these are the dangers that go uh, that goes along with this uh, system the all of these have got implications on the usability perspective so uh, in addition to that uh, the uh, the complexity of the password what kind of the password that i enter on uh, uh, or set to my account so that also has got implications in usability if you make it too complicated for example your password should have a minimum of 20 characters it should have five special characters five numbers and then at least five upper case letters five lower case letters something like this then it might be from the security perspective it might be more secure but remembering that kind of the password for the users is pretty hard that's why most of the system that you see uh, restrict you to uh, or have the password up to allow you to have password up to length 8 in that uh, eight character length itself they will ask you to use certain at least one special characters one uh, digit or something like that but uh, the more such constraint that you enforce it make uh, the password larger that might be secure but the usability is hampered so uh, if you make complications then what will happen if the users are uh, finding it hard to remember then they will write it on a piece of paper and stick somewhere or they'll store it on the uh, in a mobile phone so that sexually supports so this is as good as not having any uh, authentication system for your account at all because uh, it's out there anybody who can access the system can open that uh, file and then just see that and then the additionally the restrictions that you put to how frequently you need to change that password and all uh, so uh, that is another uh, issue that uh, got bearing on the usability 
and then how easy you can break that to system so there are some password cracking mechanisms that we discussed in the previous class so if i uh, make that system having these complexities whether it is easily compromised or it's not easily compromised so in addition to that what complicate the matter is uh, users usually have many many accounts i might have my personal email account i might have Uh, the office email account. I might have uh, multiple bank accounts. All of them requires the password be remembered. So if you have my, it is usually known that users can remember only a handful number of the passwords. So in that context, having these multiple accounts and multiple passwords with different complexities will end up making the users uh, write it somewhere. that has got a bearing on the security so as you you in the process of you wanted to have more secure system we actually brought down the security to to zero because the end user ended up doing something which is completely contradictory to what you actually anticipated that is writing the password in a piece of paper or on a, on a file in your system so not contest people found out that uh, instead of using the uh, the text based passwords why can't we use the graphical password so all of our mobile phones now you allow you to draw a line or certain pattern and then go that uh, so uh, people can uh, actually use that you know you can remember the objects better than the uh, password so in the previous case if the user select easy passwords then it also becomes easy to compromise Uh, oh, but the if you by if you by going by this line, if you make the things to complicate, to ask the users to select to complicated password, then they will write it on a piece of paper or stick somewhere, and then that also brings your security to uh, zero. Both of them are bad uh, choices. So you need to find something which is on the uh, middle ground. That's why the password length is mostly. Uh, up to length 8 and uh, they don't enforce many other constraints so graphical passwords are uh, easy to recollect you humans are easily uh, better of recognizing the images so that's why we use uh, there are number of such graphical password methods that are available so uh, these are uh, categorized into two broad classes one is called the recognition based passwords where a set of the uh, objects are shown to the uh, users on the screen and then either you select uh, a sequence of object in a certain pattern or uh, whatever to select from the uh, shown image set of images you select two three of them or four of them whatever it is and then they will be uh, uh, your identifiers so next time when you try to authenticate yourself or you want to log into the system the same set of the images all of them would be shown on the screen and you need to make a selection these are the four objects that i selected to uh, as authentication to for my account so so as long as you are able to uh, provide or uh, that recognize those four images then you are allowed to log in the other kind of category is recall based password these are typical what happen is you can select uh, uh, whatever images that you uh, want to, to use as a password and then these images are mixed with a bunch of other ones and then thrown onto the screen and you need to select that object or the uh, image which you have set as a password for your uh, account so if you as long as you are able to identify what image you have set or it then the system will allow you to go ahead and uh, authenticate or it authenticates your uh, so that is the graphical user face so in a nutshell what i wanted to say is so uh, passwords are in a way very common but that has got uh, usability uh, aspects so you need to trade up how much complicated password you want to set and then uh, how much the users can actually cope up with so in that context the graphical passwords are better off so that's why many of the systems now come with the password as well so let's go further and then look into another authentication mechanism which is called biometric based user authentication 
So we will understand what are the usability aspects related to the biometrics based authentication system. So usually biometric authentication system happens with uh, three things. Either you give your thumb impression, that is your fingerprint or the eye is, uh, or scanned uh, uh, retina and then uh, that is called the iris uh, recognition system or in some cases you might some people um, uh, applications might use your voice as an uh, means of the authentication these are the three things either your voice or your uh, uh, eyes done or your thumb impression so these uh, uh, the uh, security right of these biometric based authentication systems are governed by two to three things one is the collection system which collect the biometric data themselves need to be usable uh, if they make a good job in collecting or uh, collecting your thumb print then subsequently you can store and process it and use it for recognition and second thing is when you collect the data where do i actually store that can I store that uh, in a uh, kind of the card which can be taken carried uh, along with the user and then you recognize it or you have a centralized database and where this biometric uh, impression is stored and then when the user actually wants to authenticate uh, the uh, whatever user supplied is there that is uh, compared with what you have in the uh, network uh, servers. So all of them have got the aspects. So I'll just give an example now. If you store the biometric data in a card, then the card might be stolen. So because somebody wants to log in, access the system now, if your card is stolen, then you are stuck. Uh, and then uh, on the other hand, if you use a database network system to store the uh, these biometric data, then uh, if your network is not reliable if you have connectivity issues then the users might have issues with the verification of that uh, biometric data so it goes on this so what is the one one convenience you gain on one thing you actually lose on the other front so uh, but somewhere you need to make that uh, compromise to, which is acceptable to a large section of the users and then when you do the verification the other things can things can actually go wrong so for example if i have given my biometric thing so at the time of the biometric collection there is a different device but at the time of the verification something else is there and if that device actually fails to uh, scan the your fingerprint correctly then you will have an issue in uh, logging into or accessing the accessing your account so these are all kind of the and the biggest uh, disarmament as a barrier for biometric based uh, system is persons who are having the disability. So, for example, somebody who is not having or having an issue with his thumb may not be able to give the fingerprint. Then how do we actually make that kind of user uh, access the system? And then you are completely relying on the biometric capturing device. It is not copying the uh, biometric data and storing it somewhere. And it is actually replaying that subsequently that uh, it goes with that implicit trust. And then there are uh, privacy issues. So when you give an impression, so it might give you your DNA details. So uh, forensic analysts and all might be uh, using such kind of the method so every time you touch something then uh, probably you leave your thumb impression there and then using that uh, your identity might be uh, revealed so those are some of the ideas so uh, that's how you need to make so every system authentication system or in general any security system has got some pros and some cons so in the context, uh, what kind of the users you are targeting, how whether these are tech savvy, tech savvy keeping that in mind, uh, how uh, you anticipate and study how likely they are going to react to such a system and then based on that you make an informed decision to uh, go with whether I should go with the password based authentication, whether I should go with the biometric based authentication or whether I should go with the kind of both the options so user has got a choice so these these are kind of the this, uh, that's where we are coming these are not the decisions or the uh, little to do with how well the user interface is defined 
but these are all design choices so right at the beginning when you conceptualize your system you need to think of that if you want a biometric based authentication you need you need a different design if you need you want to have a password based authentication you probably go with a different uh, system so then in that context the battle between the users and the developers uh, can be understood uh, or can be summarized in the following points the more number of the options or the controls that you give to the end users because they are involved in the decision making process particularly the security based decision making process so those are considered as the bad choices so you you do the best job to defend at the as a developer but you don't ask the end user to make certain choices so that is the choice so building something that relies on user education you need to do the training uh, so uh, you uh, you require certain set of users who understand the implications and having that kind of expectation is actually a bad thing to, that can happen so the best thing is to design a system such that it does not need to ask the end user so when the user reaction is well known when they are invariably going to click on yes whether it has got the uh, positive implication or negative implication so that is uh, a, a recipe for disaster so you do the right thing at the back end but you don't inform the end user so something which is Uh, let's say if you decide not to allow to install some kind of the executable on the system for whatever reason so you just don't allow don't try to explain that or give a control to the end user saying that oh, you can disable i have disabled this one for so and so reason right? kind of too much of information that you throw at the user Uh, so it becomes uh, much complicated it's very much likely that they will go ahead by disabling that rather than honoring what uh, you have uh, uh, given uh, as a security feature 